Good morning. It is 5 a.m. Thursday here in Manila. I'm Rain with me with your first look at the news. Egypt announced a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. It began November 21, 9 p.m. Cairo time, or about 3 a.m. here in Manila. Reports say Israel had agreed to truce in Gaza, but will not lift its blockade. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton says Egypt's new government is assuming responsibility and leadership in the region. Egyptian sources say the truce includes an end to assassinations and incursions, and also ease movement of Palestinians. The Philippine team is now in Tel Aviv preparing for Filipinos' possible evacuation if the conflict worsens. There are about 41,000 Filipinos in Israel and about 100 in Gaza. Well, before the ceasefire announcement, militants bombed a public transport bus in Tel Aviv. The blast injured 22 people, shook up the Israeli public and drew immediate condemnation from world leaders. Stocks advance Wednesday after that ceasefire was declared to end the flare-up in violence between Israel and the Palestinians, but trading volume was light ahead of Thursday's market holiday. In Asia on Wednesday, the markets had gained as investors focused on a four-year high in new home construction in the U.S., shrugging off the failure of Euro finance ministers to decide on the next bailout installment for Greece. Moving on, the Federal Bureau of Investigation says it foiled an alleged terror plot by three so-called homegrown terrorists. The three were allegedly set to flee the U.S. to join a terror group in Afghanistan. They also discussed several targets, including the Philippines and Palestine. Among the alleged terrorists is 23-year-old Philippine-born Ralph Kenneth de Leon. Philippines, along with three other claimant countries of the disputed Spratly Islands, will hold a meeting on December 12th here in Manila. Foreign Affairs Secretary Albert de Rosario says government will hold talks with Malaysia, Brunei and Vietnam about the territorial row. Del Rosario adds the meeting will be consultative in nature. Senators say they won't think twice about revoking franchises if telcos will not comply with the National Telecommunications Commission's order to refund subscribers for overcharging them on text messages. But cell phone companies are not backing down, saying they will question the order. The Domestic Workers Act, better known as the Kasambahai Bill, comes a step closer to becoming a law. The bicameral conference committee reconciled both the House and Senate versions of the proposal towards better wages and benefits for household helpers in the country. <music> Government Peace Panel Chair Marvik Leonen is formally sworn in as the new Associate Justice of the Supreme Court. A recommendation will be submitted to President Aquino soon on Leonen's replacement as chief negotiator in the peace talks. The World Bank says OFW remittances will hit $24 billion this year, helping the Philippines tie Mexico as the third biggest recipient of remittances in the world. The World Bank says while migrant workers are affected by the global economic slowdown, the volume of money being sent by workers to their home countries remains resilient. Sports new Lakers coach Mike D'Antoni won in his debut, guiding Los Angeles to a 95-90 victory over the Brooklyn Nets. Kobe Bryant scored six of his 25 points in the final two minutes. And a new study shows the Philippines is the most emotional society in the world, while Singapore is the least emotional. That was your first look at the top stories this Thursday, Thanksgiving in the U.S., the 22nd of November, 2012. I'm Rain Musni. Thank you for staying ahead with ANC.